What's going on everybody? Today, Frozen Flame is now in early access and available for download. I'm going to go over all the basics in the game, such as combat, cooking, gathering, crafting, building, what to look for in the world, and more. Timestamps are going to be available for this video, but before you jump ahead, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to be streaming this game over at my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash so come on over and say hey. Links are down in the description below. Alright, so when you first start your campaign, you'll get a real short prologue segment that teaches you basic combat before spitting you out at character creation, which is fairly basic, but it gives you enough options to make you stand apart from your friends. Once you get through the intro section, the real game begins. Basic Gathering When you first start Frozen Flame, before you even engage in combat, you'll want to begin by gathering resources. These can be found in a variety of ways. Objects like branches and stone can be found lying loose on the floor, and a quick tap of your action button, which is E by default, will loot these into your inventory. Some other objects that require a little more work to pull up, indicated by this symbol here, require you to hold your action button, or E, for a few seconds to loot them. Be careful that you're not being attacked while trying to grab these. Basic Crafting Once you have some stone and some branches, you'll be ready to start with basic crafting. This can be done from your inventory screen, which by default can be opened with the tab key. Once you're on the crafting screen, you can use the materials you've found so far to craft these items, and this can be done anywhere in the world. These items can range from axes for chopping down trees, bonfires to cook food, crates to store loose materials, beds to rest in, crafting benches, and a whole lot more. As you gather more materials, you'll unlock new recipes. Advanced Gathering Once you have some basic crafting tools made, like axes or pickaxes, you can begin to do a bit more advanced gathering. This includes things like chopping down trees or mining ore nodes. If you want to gather from these, switch to the appropriate tool on your toolbar and start whacking away. Some tools may not be strong enough for certain materials, so you may need to come back once you've crafted a stronger version of the tool. Building Once you have enough materials, you can begin using the building mode, which by default is bound to the Q key. Early in the game, you'll have access to makeshift structures, which require mostly branches and some fiber to craft. As you progress through the game, you'll find the materials and resources to begin crafting more difficult bases using wood or stone. You also have the ability to spend your resources to repair your structures or tear them down. Advanced Crafting once you've gathered more materials, such as logs from trees, you'll be able to craft your first crafting bench. A crafting bench must be placed on a floor that you've created for yourself, so if you haven't already, start building. You don't have to build an entire house to place this, a single floor tile will work just fine. Placing a crafting bench will teach you how to make all kinds of new tools, weapons, and armor, and it'll unlock more options as you gather new materials. You can also use this crafting bench to repair your gear. Quests Occasionally, you'll run into an NPC with yellow exclamation point over their head. You should be familiar with this if you've played MMOs such as World of Warcraft. Once you've interacted with this NPC, they'll tell you their troubles and ask you to do them a favor, giving you a quest, and the objective will be tracked on the top right of your screen. You can view all of your current quests on the map screen. These can range from clearing out enemy encampments, crafting an item, building a structure, retrieving something from a chest, and more. Once you complete the quest objectives, you'll typically be guided to return back to the quest giver to claim your rewards. Trading Quest givers and other various NPCs will often also have a trade option, which you can trade your coins or other items in exchange for various goods, blueprints, and more. The first time you come across Hornhead, he'll likely have a few things available to buy, but you won't have enough coin yet to purchase it, so make note and come back when you do. The Map While on your map screen, which can be accessed by pressing the M key, you can see your current location and other key locations on the map. Clicking between various quests will track that quest, showing the objective locations on the map, and also showing in-world yellow beams that guide you towards your objective for that quest. In addition to the quest markers, you can also place your own markers on the map, 
by right-clicking. This will place a circle on your map and show a purple beam from the sky that can be useful for navigating anywhere you'd like. Combat Combat in Frozen Flame is fairly basic. You have three primary types of dealing damage, depending on the weapons that you choose. Melee, Archery, and Spellcasting. Left-click attacks, while right-click blocks. While the block can be useful, sometimes a better option is to use your dodge, which is defaulted to your left alt button. While you're in combat, you can also dodge with the spacebar while moving backwards or in a sideways direction. Melee weapons, such as axes or swords, are used up close and can be used from a standing position and also used as a leap attack. The bow for archery and the staff for spellcasting can be used at a distance to launch projectiles at your target. Once your enemy is perished, you'll earn experience, and if they leave a body behind, it can be looted with your action button or by pressing E. Leveling up. While performing tasks in the game, such as killing monsters, completing quests, using certain consumables, etc., you'll begin to earn flame, or what is traditionally referred to as experience. This is tracked in the top left corner of your game screen, also indicating your current level. Once your flame indicator fills up, you'll gain a level and a frozen flame. Once you obtain a frozen flame, you can go to one of these altars scattered around the world and choose skill points. To make a well-balanced character, you'll probably want to spread some points around the whole tree. But the archer abilities are generally towards the top of the tree, the melee abilities are towards the bottom left, and the spellcaster abilities are on the bottom right. Your first frozen flame will be spent in the centermost node, which is called Hero's Ancestry, and gives you the ability to use combat energy. Combat Energy once you have this skill unlocked in your altar, while fighting in combat, this small diamond-shaped gauge will begin to fill up. Once it's completely full, you'll be able to expend the combat energy in a charged-up attack that varies from weapon to weapon. You can activate it by holding down your attack button briefly. You can momentarily store this combat energy at full, but if you wait too long to use it, the meter will begin to diminish, and you'll have to charge it back up to use it again. Cooking Once you've collected a bunch of cooking materials, such as fruits, vegetables, animals, or, well, even insects, you can create a bonfire to cook them. This requires branches and stone to place down. Logs can be added to fuel the fire up to five, with the fire lasting longer for each log added. Once you open the bonfire screen, you can add food to cook. You can cook one or two foods at a time, and depending on which foods you add, different dishes will be created. While cooking a single apple will result in a fruit dessert, Two fruits can be combined to make a fruit pie. Once you've learned a recipe, it's added to the cookbook tab at the top of the screen, which you can use later to quickly make that recipe again using the materials available. So you don't need to remember exactly which foods made what. Some recipes will take more time to cook than others. Teleports. These large circular disks can be found around the world and walking over one for the first time will activate it, unlocking it to be used as a fast travel point moving forward. You can travel from any of these discs to another. Additionally, if you die, you'll return to the closest one activated. Furthermore, using a Returnal Stone will bring you back to the last one activated, but this is at the cost of all of your current flame or experience that you've gained for the current level, so this really only makes sense to use it if you're desperate or if you just leveled up. Death. So, your health just reached zero, and you took an unfortunate death while adventuring across the world of Arcana. Have no fear, not all is lost. Some is, though. Your equipped gear will take a durability punishment, and some of your items may break entirely. If you resurrect back in a teleport, and you find yourself almost completely naked, I get it. We've all been there. However, you'll also notice that a large pool of your flame has also been removed from your current level. On the bright side, if you're able to make it back to where you died, you'll be able to reclaim your flame and get your experience back. If you fell from a high place and you're not sure where the flame wound up, check where you originally jumped from. It's probably going to be there. Alright, now we want to take a look at some of the things that you want to keep an eye out for when you're exploring the world. Memorials. 
These large blue structures can be found scattered around the islands. As you find them, you'll be presented with some lore of the world, with an indicator at the bottom that shows how many you found on the current island. Once you've obtained all of them for that section, you'll be given a reward. Tablets You'll sometimes come across these glowing tablets scattered around the world. Reading them will give you some lore, and often provide hints for quest objectives. These will also often reward you with a flame essence the first time you read them. So pay attention to these, particularly any blue text. Simple Chests These chests are available to open upon locating them, and will generally contain a small prize such as a potion. Rune Locked Chests These chests will appear locked when you first locate them. But after activating one, you'll be tasked to find runes nearby, which emit a glow and a very noticeable hum that you can use to locate them. After finding them all, you should hear this sound, and you'll be able to open up the chest. Boss Chests Near a boss location, you'll come across these very large chests, which remain locked until the boss is defeated. Once you take down the boss and open up this chest, they'll typically contain higher quality armor or weapons. Ritual Stones These large stone structures are for rituals, which will give you a short amount of time to complete various tasks. These tasks can vary, such as collecting energy from nearby rune stones, catching fish, shooting airborne enemies out of the sky, platforming challenges, and more. Upon completing these challenges in time, you'll receive a hefty flame reward. I should note here that the runestone objectives can be tricky to locate all the stones scattered around the area, so if you can't find one, you can go back to the main ritual stone and tap E, and it'll send out blue pulses in the direction of the active runestones. Enemy Encampments Sometimes you'll notice an area with a large chest highlighted with a purple glow in the center, often surrounded by fence-like structures. These encampments are guarded by aboriginals that must be defeated. Once you take down all the nearby enemies, the chest's purple glow will turn blue and unlock, allowing you to retrieve its contents, which will often contain gold coins. Rune Stones These tall, thin stone structures adorned by rune carvings grant rune stones. These rune stones can be used to trade for goods at the archaeologists. Thorns if you see a large mass of thorns, like this, there's a good chance it's hiding or protecting something. There might be a hint somewhere in the world that teaches you what you need to bypass this. Here's a hint. I saw some of these vines near what appears to be a dungeon entrance located near the archaeologists. Maybe Hornhead can assist you too. In general, I wanted to stay away from topics in this video that might be considered a little too spoilery. But if I didn't cover any questions that you might have, feel free to leave a comment on this video, or jump into my Twitch chat and I'll try my best to help you out. I hope you guys all enjoy this game as much as I have been, and thank you so much for watching.